Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Permaculture Perspectives. So today we are going to be doing three things. We're going to be replanting, or should I say repotting, some leggy seedlings. Uh, we're going to be showing you the benefits of having a tiny greenhouse. And we're also going to explore two different versions of gardening in a dry climate. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back. So first of all, I'm going to be repotting some of these seedlings which have um, gotten a bit leggy as it's called, which just means that they are, hold on, how can I best show you? They just have like these really long stems and the stems, I shouldn't be touching them. The stems are really delicate um, and apparently they need to be repotted because um, it makes them more susceptible to damage to have this really long, tiny little stem. And they grow like this because if they're grown in an environment that's not sunny enough, they try to reach towards the sun. So I'm, I was looking around for some slightly bigger containers. Um, not all of them need to go in bigger containers, but some of them do. Like this guy, for example. This is a zucchini and he's way too cramped. Um, so I want to repot him for sure. And he needs a bigger pot. So if you don't have a bunch of um, these little plastic planter pots lying around, you can always get creative and take like milk cartons, in this case almond milk, and you just cut it to size, about this big is fine I think, and then you just poke holes in the bottom for drainage. Um, another thing a lot of people have is yogurt pots and so I'm just gonna take this it has a name can't remember what it is but it's just like a pokey thing um, so you just make holes you could probably just use a uh, tiny scissors or small knife but this works perfectly because it's so little effort and then you're good to go. Hey guys, welcome back. So I've got here my victims for repotting and down below I have a container where I've mixed up um, just over half seed starting mix and just under half compost so that they can grow really well, um, hopefully. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to repot this guy just to show you. Um, so it's good if the soil is wet when you're repotting, that way it all kind of sticks together and you don't make them all naked. Um, so I'm just going to fill this up a little bit. My bucket is kind of big. Um, so it's just a planter with a bag to cover the holes. This guy's going to get a nice big pot. Um, you know what? I think he needs a big pot, but maybe not enormous. So I'm actually going to cut. I'm just going to cut the lip off here, just so that we don't waste soil. Okay. So I'm just going to gently tease this open. You can see that he's got some roots coming out here, which is a good sign. Just gonna make a little hole. So I've just covered him up, up to about this much. I've still left some stem because zucchinis are natural crawlers, so they do have a long stem, obviously, when they're adults. Um, but this is just gonna help make more roots because the cells on really young plants are able to differentiate into roots really easily if you bury them. So if you give him a strong root system, he's gonna be really grateful. Um, so now I'm just gonna water and that will encourage more root production. So I've got my watering bottle here and I just made this from an old vitamin water bottle and I poked holes in the top 
with this super handy um, and so this just helps uh, the watering to be more gentle and it's cool to do this with yogurt cups because then you have a little bottom for it already so I'm just gonna give it a good soak And this is cool too because you can, by squeezing it, you can actually control how much water is coming out. And so that is how you replant, repot, should I say, a leggy plant. Now, sometimes what I've noticed is when I plant into bigger pots like this, um, the soil kind of just shrinks down over time, I guess as it compacts because it's very airy and poofy when you first do it. So with ones like these where there's quite a lot of room to fill it up, I'm just going to fill it up. I'm not going to repot it because it's already a really big pot. So I'm just going to add my mixture to the top. So I've just added, as you can see, some more on there. This guy looks pretty healthy and I think it's because I gave him, I don't know why they're all guys, but <laughs> I gave him a bigger living space from the get-go and I know zucchinis like that so I'll know that for the future too water you down there we go awesome so there you have it that's how you repot leggy seedlings before we go outside, I just wanted to show you really quickly how I repotted these charred seedlings. And you can see that I've buried them right up to their first, their baby leaves, which is gonna help make as many roots as possible. Okay guys, let's take a walk outside. And here we have our frame for the tiny greenhouse that we'll be building. Um, and it's just, uh, the reason why we made it is because we live in a basement apartment and starting seeds on our windowsill means that our seedlings grow really slowly because there's just not enough light. So we thought to have a little cold frame greenhouse hybrid that we made for absolutely almost free. I mean, all of the materials were free. The wood is just a recycled pallet that we got for free. And then the plastic was just, um... A plastic wrapper that our mattress came wrapped up in from Ikea um, so we decided to use that and then we just um, yeah, broke down the wood and constructed this really simple little frame and so here you can see that we are covering the outside with the plastic and so the back the top and the front is all gonna be one piece and then we're gonna trim it to size and then we're going to cover the sides we just figured that would be the easiest way to go about it um and so an <laughs> another reason why we really wanted this greenhouse was that um to counteract the slowness that our seedlings were growing we started taking them outside on sunny days and then bringing them in um but it takes a long time because we have a lot of trays and it's just kind of tedious thing to do so we thought oh wouldn't it be nice if we could just leave them outside and not have to worry about them and just go out there to water um so we thought yeah let's do this we had the extra wood we had the plastic we yeah thought this would be a neat little project so here we have already chopped off um the excess plastic and we're just fitting the side plastics here and we decided that we were going to leave a little gap at the very top like a little triangle of missing plastic which you can see here in the finished product um, and this is just for ventilation because it does get really hot where we live and we don't want to suffocate our baby plants we probably won't need this greenhouse for very much longer but just maybe for the next month or so um as we are planting out different things we're not really sure how things are going to grow here so we just want to have a lot of backup plants but um this project did not take very long at all um other than taking the wood off of the pallet that was the most tedious part of it and that was about an hour's worth of work um and then maybe 45 minutes to put it all together and then another half an hour to stick on the plastic and it was kind of fun too 
And um, as you can see, it's quite windy where we live. So we do have to protect our plants from that. And luckily the pallet wood is, has some weight to it. So I we're hoping that this thing does not get blown around too much. But it is protected by the fence. So we're thinking it should be okay. The cool thing about this greenhouse is that it's super portable. So you can just carry it around, store it really easily. Okay, so now we are out in the backyard where we have two garden beds and our upstairs neighbors have two garden beds as well. And so we have two different approaches. We do live in an arid climate, so we're not going to have a lot of water in the summertime. And in this bed here, um, the plant that I'm pointing out right now is a wild onion that's native to the region where we live. And it is uh, edible. And um, what we've decided to do is just to put a really thin layer of straw mulch. Here's another wild succulent plant. And so we've decided to interplant wild plants with our veggies. And specifically, these are wild plants that do not need very much irrigation. So we thought that over time they could become like a kind of living mulch. Um, and they would not compete for the more deeper rooted, I mean with the more deeper rooted veggies for space and for water. And also we really wanted to attract a lot of pollinators and bees and also distract the yucky pests. Here we have another succulent and we just, um, this kind of happened synchronicitously. I don't know if that's a word, but, um, there was a wild, um, drought tolerant plant sale the other day and I went and they just, um, went to like 50% off everything when I got there because it was the end of the sale. And so I just picked up a bunch and I thought we could do this interplanting idea and see how it works. As you can see, I've got some arugula here that we planted from seed. Um, and you know, slugs do like this stuff. So maybe all these different colors and smells. We've also got some catnip in there, which I didn't show you yet. Um, but hopefully that will distract the pests. And so now over here on the other side, we've got a quite a different looking bed and this is a thickly mulched straw bed. And we did not plant from seed here except from some, except for some peas, but we mainly just planted seedlings directly into the bed and we obviously moved the mulch aside. So it's, um, yeah, we've got most of our brassicas in here and pretty much what it is is Oh, and there's that onion. <laughs> that onion hopefully is going to deter those really pesky um, cabbage moths, which tend to eat up all of the cabbage seedlings, cabbage family. We do have some nasturtiums in there too. Um, and hopefully the flowers will be a little bit distracting. Aha! What's this? A walnut. Okay, this was not here yesterday. So, oh, one of my seedlings has been uprooted. I think a squirrel is the perpetrator here. I think he maybe thought this was a good place to bury something. I think it was the walnut. Okay, I'm just gonna re, re stick this in there. There we go. Hmm, that'll be an interesting thing to observe. <laughs> maybe we'll just get like a walnut tree growing out of here. So this is where we planted the peas. Oh, and this is the first strawberry yay that's awesome so guys that's about it for me as you can see these are the two garden bed varieties that we're going to be trying here in the arid climate hopefully this straw mulch um, the thickness of it will help keep the moisture in and hopefully on this side we will get the native plants creating some nice landscapes and attracting some pollinators um, so if you guys want to follow me uh, here on YouTube, you can just subscribe to my channel and click the notification button to stay up to date with all my videos. You can also give this video a like and comment below to let me know what you thought. Um, and if you want to connect with me, just pop me a message in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on Permaculture Perspectives. See ya!